Okay, we're live. Hello, Yasin. How are you? Hi, Georgi. I'm fine here in the basement. In the basement. I was super excited to have you on the podcast. Unfortunately, Yuli and your partner uh, had a big uh, family um, event, let's say, or something really important. So I'm uh, totally fine with it. Family first. Um, and um, But I'm very, very happy to have you on. Um, I want to tell a little bit of backstory how I found about you. Um, a colleague of mine was on the um, Jung um, Architectures talks and uh, she came back the next day at work and she said, because she didn't tell me that there was this event and I missed it. And um, the next day I was mad at her, I said, so how was it? Was it cool? And she said, you didn't miss much, but you missed just this duo. They're crazy, techno beton and there is, uh, I, she told me, one guy, it's, I think, from the Netherlands, and the other guy, it's from Germany. And I was like, um, okay, let me check it out on YouTube. And I was like, this guy's not from the Netherlands, from Bulgaria. So <laughs> I was, <laughs> and your presentation was super, super cool. And this is why I decided to organize with you for the first time this live event where... Um, where people can watch it live because I really loved your performance. And you can introduce Techno Beton a little bit as in the way you like and tell people what you do. Well, Techno Beton is uh, part of a um, big collective uh, which we started uh, to um, work on uh, maybe um, a lot of years ago and start on the uh, 3rd of March. And it's a part of a couple of companies. Uh, which um, which work closely uh, with each other. For example, the University of Looking Good, which is the theory base of uh, Technobeton. Then uh, it comes Technobeton on it, and some uh, some um, special tasks are reserved for Divine Design, which was uh, founded also um, uh, around 2002. So uh, it's a very very unclear structure uh, what it is. We make uh, art, we make music, and we make architecture and design. And we work sometimes on a theory base uh, with uh, pixels or pixel theory. And uh, to be really honest, uh, I also don't know exactly what uh, Technobaton does. And if you uh, watch it, uh, if you if you uh, um, look at my uh, description at uh, Facebook, I think I'm uh, like the doorman at Te Technobaton. So uh, <laughs> I don't even know what happens inside. I stop at the door and yeah, it's like uh, security. <laughs> Uh, what I can say is that you guys are performance um, uh, performers, uh, uh, in because I think that's something really cool that you can combine from the techno music and uh, when you present your projects and um, and um, your architectural projects. And that was what really was uh, catching the eye among uh, all the other architects the way you guys present your projects. Uh, so um, I want to leave you the stage so that you can show um, how you guys work, what you guys design. And then after that, uh, I, I will have a little conversation about more about the backstage of the with the doorman of Technobaton. Yeah, perfect. Thanks uh, for the invitation. Thanks uh, to uh, for these uh, circumstances and the chance to uh, find us. Um, yeah with the help of uh, your friend. And uh, to be very honest, it was a wonderful evening in Frankfurt. Um, it was uh, like the very typical, you know, the art architectural um, evening where uh, some guy makes bars, another guy makes uh, houses. And then, of course, if you start uh, presenting the work of Technobaton, it's not the thing that the architects are used to listen or to look at. And it's very refreshing. Uh, the question about the music or the architecture, what is, for example, the uh, link between the music and the architecture? It's very difficult, but as you uh, as you um, told, uh, that uh, that uh, it was a really really entertaining presentation. Uh, it's like uh, the process. If you work uh, on a on a project, it should feel like music. So if you it should feel like uh, hearing music, and to maybe this flow is the um, one of the characteristics of uh, techno baton, um, that's why it's also this melodical name. And I would, of course, uh, be glad to show you some of our work. If um, 
I've already shared my screen. Yes, you, we're seeing the, the first uh, sort of uh, pixels of your, ah, of your yes. JPEG. But it's not the right one. Normally, we start always uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the upper part of the picture, and we work from upper layers and move to the uh, deepness of things, ideas, and projects. And uh, if you have a space and if you have an interior, for example, uh, very often in the upper layer of the interior is the suspended ceiling, which uh, a lot of architects hate because it's full of installations and full of uh, things that you want to hide. And uh, some architects, of course, are very, um, yeah, uh, very, um, they like to experiment or they're not afraid to paint the ceiling in black, uh, but uh, it's also sort of a strategy which we have seen a lot. So uh, we had this, uh, this uh, ceiling of the Imperia uh, concept store. Uh, we have, I'll, I'll show you three projects and we'll start with the Imperia concept store in Stuttgart in the Tübinger Strasse 23. And you see the one of one of the important details of the um, suspended ceiling it's a lot of uh, small concrete parts and uh, small um, wires you can see uh, the uh, combination the reinforcement of the concrete which is externalized and um, normally this uh, ceiling has to be the carrier of the light but we decided here to be um, more in the in the role of uh, having um, a sculpture which is which is um, uh, of course uh, made more uh, dramatic through light so uh, it's not the ceiling that gives light it receives light and reflects it on the store uh, so it was a very experimental and very um, complex um, <laughs> first project to make this uh, suspended ceiling which is uh, here you see it, it's uh, connected to the other part of the ceiling. And we have four, like four columns here, um, which are suspended from the, from the concrete um, ceiling. Yeah. All right. Uh, in the middle, uh, there are cables. Uh, you need cables for everything, uh, yeah, for lamps or for other things. But there are cables and uh, we said, OK, uh, first task uh, done and then let's go to the to the wall. Uh, in this wall, we had uh, not so much money because we spent everything on the ceiling and we have this uh, very favorite material which makes noises. If you know how to say it in English, I don't remember, but if you pop this, uh, yeah, pop this, um, this um, buttons of the ceiling, then you have this uh, wonderful um, fulfilling, uh, uh, fulfilling um, effect. And um, yeah, it's a very pleasure, uh, pleasant. Yeah, so uh, and it's anti-statically, um, uh, it's an anti-static effect of this, uh, this uh, wall, uh, how do you say, film, uh, maybe. And uh, that's why it's a very poppy color also because of the um, sound effect. It was very expensive to uh, paint the walls because in Germany everybody is very expensive. So we decided to put this and uh, if uh, we return the space then we can just remove it. It was also a part of the, um, of the money calculation. Um, then we have uh, also very cheap wood which uh, but <laughs> As you see here, it's uh, very perfect in the construction because we had the diagonal um, diagonal joints and not only uh, 90 degrees, but we want to make a very um, stringent uh, appearance of these uh, shelves, which are still empty, but there is where we put the products, of course. It's a shop, it's a, uh, it's a concept store for plants, a concept store for uh, nice things to eat, and uh, some bouquets, uh, which we don't have in this visualization because uh, they are very difficult to render. Already we had some problems with the plants to be rendered. 
and that's why they have this uh, very plain green color normally they have uh, more detail but uh, it was cheaper to render them like green and to make them more abstract so you see uh, when we make a project um, it's not about aha uh, how shall we make this proportion how shall we make this color how shall we make uh, yeah this construction this detail we just uh, try to tell a story while making the project and uh, finally um, while working you just tell the story and you tell the story to each other to tell the story to oneself you know you're suddenly in this story and when the story ends unexpectedly then you're finished with the project and a story if you're a good storyteller then um you don't have the the um uh you don't have the, the problems you don't have the um Widerstand of German, which is uh, a position maybe in English, from uh, factors which uh, they they um, try to annoy you. You know, ah, where do I find this? Where do you find this? How does uh, how much does it cost? You just tell the story, and the story develops, and then you have the project. So this is the basically the uh, the story of Imperia. We just told the story, and it's like uh, losing yourself in this jungle which was actually the project. Um, you make a project, uh, we made a project uh, um, about losing yourself in the jungle. And uh, for example, it's another interpretation of uh, this table. It's a horse, which is a sort of a red polished material, which is lost in the middle of a noise table. And because he's lost the horse, you know, then he carries this, uh, this table and the table carries again uh, concrete pot which carries the palm and uh, the horse is very polished you know you see here so that's why we cho choose a very special flooring which is anti -slip slippery and um and then the story goes on uh, on the very um important element maybe the most important element in the shop it's the central ta table it's really exactly built as this um uh, like the the uh, sort of um, architecton by uh, Malevich construction, but very simple in the bottom, and then a big surface which is also finished with a resin um, on the on, I think uh, around uh, eighty one centimeters uh, height above the above the floor. And we have now uh, prepared for you, uh, for you, and for the lecture before this, uh, an exhibition which uh, is derived by the concept of the first Imperial store. Uh, I have to, to open now uh, a sentence. I show you now the second Imperial store, and the first Imperial store was on the other side of the street, but we moved from the first to the second. So this is the design of the second store where we have uh, some uh, remembering uh, it, it's a re um, not remembering it's uh, sorry i've uh, never spoken english in the last uh, three years because of corona and <laughs> like uh, something that reminds the old store like a memorial for the for the imperial yeah. number one exactly it's uh, like a, a collection of the whole uh, furniture in one to six like vitra makes and uh, we put the uh, small models and um, I, I can tell you a lot of story about, about this uh, this uh, small furniture for example this used to be a clothes uh, clothes um, you put the clothes on it you know and hang them here and this was a this was a, a display for uh, for um, jewelry but we made an abstraction normally this is plexiglass but now we made it in white and this was a DJ pool, the DJ booth, uh, yeah. And this is a green piece of furniture, which was never built, but existed as a project because uh, nobody wanted to paint uh, <laughs> styropor uh, in green color. And it was the changing room, just a big uh, yeah, curtain. Oh yeah, there's some nice chair designs and such things. And there's also a chair which uh, which is a com combination between marble and um, and uh, plexiglass. And actually, these are two breasts, but you don't see it in the small uh, scale. And uh, yeah, every object has to have a story. Oh, wait, wait a second, that that last one was a chair. Uh, this one. Yeah. 
yeah, you sit here, your head is maybe there, and you put your hands here on the... Uh, and so this is like for people that like uh, breasts. breasts. So you can have another version where the other thing instead of the breasts, right? <laughs> we'll come later to it. <laughs> okay, go for it. Don't worry. Uh, but it's a very meditative uh, chair, actually. Uh, it uh, Couldn't agree more. It was meant to be a present, uh, which was never uh, presented. Yeah. So uh, exactly. But uh, let me show you one one of the objects which we loved very much, and we moved from the old uh, old Imperial Star to the new one. It's the Beast of California. It's this one, this object, which uh, now we've changed a little. Now it's a table, but uh, still the rendering is a little bit older. And uh, it's uh, around 1,000 uh, kilogram. I don't know how many pounds for the English speaking people, but uh, it's something very heavy. And uh, we wanted to put inside um, some jewelry because uh, it's very important that nobody steals the jewelry. But now we decided to put the Techno Beton collection of synths. Like it's a Techno Beton 100. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, small synth which makes like three sounds for party beat, um, bass line and hi-hats. And uh, then we have a filter, another filter here. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is one of the objects. So this is also um, quite a large object. And uh, you notice that sometimes objects just because of their weight are being taken seriously. And just because of this massive effect, people get, get attracted like a uh, physical force, you know. Um, yeah, we try to work uh, with different, uh, with different, now you see the whole place for the first time. Uh, it's the central place, it's the ceiling. Now we have, uh, we have, uh, um, some outside area, which we also try to make beautiful, you know, and, uh, it's the it's <laughs> sort of uh, something very uh, looking very massive, but it's not because it's an uh, insulation material. And then it's a uh, mobile because we are uh, in Stuttgart. And Stuttgart is the city of cars. And uh, we put uh, here uh, like um, a car with eight wheels, actually 16 wheels, like a 16 core vehicle, which has a damaged solid construction on it. And to put a Bulgarian produced from the company Multi rock, mar marble, and granite, 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 granite uh, a round um, marble plate on which are three Strelitzia Nicolai, one of the best selling uh, plants in Imperia. In front of the car is also a gradient lamp, which um, uh, is very important because there are a lot of bicycle guys who are very aggressive in uh, Stuttgart. And um, another another bench to sit and drink cola. And uh, here I want to show you a very important uh, thing from the from the shop. If you buy a bouquet at Imperia, then you always get a sticker on it. And it depends on what uh, which mood you are, there are some some messages, you know. And of course, Disco Sex Amore. It's sort of the formula of the place of the um, of the um, Imperia shop. Because only with disco you have maybe fun, but you're not in love, and uh, things uh, get together, so you have the formula at the end. And now uh, we had a lot of in, uh, people who are interested in these uh, stickers, so we made like uh, sun, we made sorry, we made um, magic, and other things which are also important for other people. Exactly. Where I, am I now? Yeah, I'm in the basement of Imperia, which is the hmm, yeah, it's a uh, similar like uh, what I show you. We made experimental structures here, like uh, concrete uh, maquettes, uh, models, you know, and it's a uh, work for a project which we are um, um, thinking it will come in the next years above ground. It's still underground. Should emerge in the next years but it's villa technobaton so this these are studies of villa technobaton which can be on a maybe best at a, some water 
maybe not black water, but uh, water, yeah, which also looks quite good. For example, living room and terrace and some labyrinths and studio and uh, downstairs basement where you can uh, have uh, also very dirty parties. And uh, yeah, uh, so it's maybe too ambitious. This Technobeton Villa is too ambitious, but still looks cool. Uh, and then we have some, yeah, sitting area where you have two symmetrical sofas um, with uh, air mattress, very cheap air mattress, and very expensive marble blocks and the sausage construction in the uh, bottom on the golden IPA, IPE uh, beams, exactly. And in the middle, a table which is um, symbolizing the layers of time, which uh, make a relative um, proportions of mirror um, refraction and transparency on the figures which hold actually these uh, these uh, glass surfaces and uh, the red one is uh, like a crystallized blood well this is the story of the imperia yeah you have the beauty in the upper ground with the plants and bouquets you know and uh, you have the nonsense construction which was very expensive in the um, on the ceiling and you have the dark part of imperial which is underground and um, we have also dj booth there we have the tv and the table over there and the models and everything are here and um we just uh, have fun upper stairs and in the basement there are ideas which grow up and then come above ground this is how we work actually and um, it's also a good financial model because uh, imperia finances some projects which we just want to do and we don't want to approach a client who will, might have different opinion on this so we prefer very short ways to um, have an idea and to make a real project out of it which happened in this case. Uh, this is the bar which we uh, designed recently for friends, uh, for, for Benny and Markus, and it's in uh, Stuttgart. If you are in Stuttgart, just come over for a drink. Uh, you have uh, as a middle point, yeah, again, uh, it's the table, uh, not only here, not only in the next project, which I'll tell you, uh, not only in Imperia, we just want to have a uh, sort of um yeah um anchor put it on the in the middle something very heavy which um, makes the center of the space and everything gravitates around it uh, like for example this uh, very cheap and uh, it's uh, actually i don't have to say cheap but i don't want don't know the english word for günstig because Unexpe you... unexpensive Unexpensive, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to uh, sound uh, negative, you know. And um, yeah, these are the 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 most critical um, part of the project. Where uh, if somebody comes to the bar and says, "Why the fuck you put this? Why the fuck you uh, made everything so nice and put this?" But we love them, and um, yeah, they gravitate also around this uh, this uh, magnet here. Sorry about the, the the distortion of the picture, but uh, it's it's like the rendering, you know, it's the perspective. But in the uh, in the reality, it's a horiz horizontal uh, flow, and um, yeah, you have uh, the the response on the wall of these two UFOs. You have the sunset and the sunrise. Then you have the clouds, and you have the here the like uh, we said. Okay, it's uh, some thunder or a lightning. Yeah, you don't see the thunder, but it's a lightning, yeah, exactly, which comes here on another cloud, and it's a volcano, and it's a, it's a lake on a pink earth, and it's a mountain, of course. And uh, why did we make this landscape idea? Because uh, Stuttgart is very provincial, and um, if you make an interior everybody expects from you that you make an interior so we said no if you're actually in the city what do you see 
you see all the time these hills, you see all the time some landscapes, it looks very rural. They are afraid of uh, high rises and, uh, you know, higher buildings like in Frankfurt, for example. Now I saw two construction places, but somehow people here are afraid of uh, more than 10 floors. And um, that's why you see these old hills and uh, it's like a village, you know. So I said, OK, come on, let's make a mirror to this fucking village, you know, and uh, make a, um, just a landscape here. And you go inside, you want to see an interior, but you see a landscape, which you always see, but uh, now you are in this landscape, yeah. And exactly here, it's the same thing. You see it from another, uh, you have to make like this, then it's uh, it looks better, but it's uh, best thing is to come to Stuttgart. You don't have the feeling that you uh, go inside, You if you enter the building, you um, have the feeling that you go in a, on a landscape, uh, exactly, yeah. You go outside and this is the famous toilet the famous toilet which we um obviously designed in the very last second and um because uh, it was very late we had to uh, deliver a project and he said ah okay well, we have an idea we have an idea and the clients they their friends of us they trust us still and um they said hey, okay if you have a project don't, we don't worry but they were quite nervous you know and in the last moment psh, so it was too late. They couldn't change anything. They, by the way, they really didn't change anything. We made the first uh, rendering and then make it like this, and they were like super happy. We are even more happy that nobody changed anything. And this is the toilet where uh, you make a lot of selfies. And the trick is, if you go inside, you think that everything is a mirror, but it's not. And you see suddenly the girls or the guys on the other side. If you a guy or a girl, you know, you see the other people on the other side suddenly and <laughs> you're like, <"Nah." laughs> and suddenly somebody enters and uh, which is quite a cool um, thing about the toilet and it's very strong because the space is so compressed and I didn't uh, expect it. Yeah, by the way, Julian um, made some really nice uh, uh, animations about the um, I want to show you some details. And actually, yesterday we recorded everything, but it was in German. And uh, it was, uh, we will put it maybe someday online for the people who don't understand English. And uh, also, it was very, very over um, exposed. So it's very, very, uh, you don't see anything actually. But now, this table, yeah, it's uh, the central one. And we have a lot of details here. We have some constructions. We have uh, a lot of pyramids. These are actually the pyramid tops, which were not so good. And we don't want to throw them uh, away. So everything has a role in this project. And uh, the project has to, has, uh, has to have a history because if you built it, then um, you don't ha have anything from this project except of uh, maybe some uh, memories which op when you open your uh, software. So uh, we said, okay, some some uh, results, um, uh, some uh, results of the project. We built them in the project, so that if we one day open the scene, then a model or see. Uh, something which went wrong <laughs> so in the pyramids and other pyramids which were not as good as the final one and um we have here the the installations a lot of installation because we play uh music on the table where there are djs uh, also newspapers and this is the steel construction this is the mirror with the steel construction which i refer to as uh, uh not the thunder but the lightning exactly which holds this cloud and there is also another mini mini model of a temple here with a double uh, bed you know you see it under the top of the pyramid it's a volcano so uh, the volcano has to have a lava um base which is here which first want we want to be a uh, very technical lava so if you want uh, to step on it, it uh, gets very warm and you see the, the floor heating. But we said, no, 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 it's, uh, let's print it. Maybe it's uh, cheaper. So we printed it on, uh, on, the, um, on the floor and then put on it uh, some uh, pink you know, that you don't see. 
the lava because it's uh, some people get afraid maybe and it's the floor construction very typical german construction which uh, it's uh, some concrete some uh, dampfsperre uh, don't ask me how it's in english and some uh, um, favorite details from the second semester we learned in, uh, we won't, don't want to disappoint our professors and um here some uh, wall constructions and if you want to see if the guy worked very good, yeah, he worked good, I think. The uh, talking about <laughs> the gypsum, the gypsum walls, the drywalls, gypsum drywalls, yeah, exactly. Some installations which are hidden behind the uh, behind the blue curtain, and some bench which was made by, by Venzi in Bulgaria and sent with bus to uh, Germany, and we put it on the uh, concrete wall, and now we have it. And then uh, let me see uh, here the poetic of the table and the poetic poetics of um, the technische Ausbau. I'll show you very quickly, but I have to change uh, the the window. I'll, may, I'll, I'll show later the poetics. Um, now we have also the explosion drawing of the um, bar. We have here some some servers here in the back, and we put them very elegantly on two marble plates uh, and uh, then we have the the shelves with the alcohol put also ah we have also a very um like um normal um normal uh, object in this very styly bar which is the beer uh, column because uh, if you are a simple guy you just want to have a beer and not a fancy cocktail so we also put a beer column exactly then the table in the back uh, in the in the basement which i showed you on the picture this very pink one but it's here a little, little bit another color which we have uh, layered construction again of steel frame then you have the active coal filter uh, layer exactly which filters the water if you wash your hands or you uh, wash your teeth or whatever you know and then uh, it's getting filtered here and it gets again to the soap uh, soap bottles and uh, another soap bottles and also it goes up to the here to the water again and it's a warm water which goes then I don't see it here but it goes um, yeah back the green pipe which makes the heat recovery uh, with a uh, uh, copper spiral and then we have also a lot of uh, people who want to make selfies so we put a marble router inside behind the paper um, thing that you get the papers when you wash your hands and it's a marble router which is uh, very beautiful but it's still, um, it's unfortunately hidden inside and uh, nobody can see it exactly. We want to have also good acoustics and noise in our projects, which you see here, the absorbing pyramids in the shelves and in the floors, in the, in the ceilings everywhere where we can put it, but you don't see it because people try to use it very often. We hide them. Uh, there is a very um limited space for sleeping in stuttgart and it's very expensive so uh, we made uh, gave a chance it, the, the bar is also in a hotel building which uh, we wanted to uh, comment somehow and we gave a chance for some people if they come to our bar and if you uh, first drink 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 and you're really drunk then you can go down you can wash your teeth and uh, face you know and then if you uh, want it was one action only for one mo mo uh, month it was a promotion for one month but if you want it you just can go behind this and then go to sleep on uh, Stiropo, Dalmatina Stiropo. it's a Dalma, Dalmatic I don't know Dalmatin yeah uh, that was Dalmatin Stiropo <laughs> bet on some uh, cases of beer you know here Oh, you see here very bad the alpha channel hasn't been erased 
and um, yeah, you can sleep here, but people come to the bathroom and they they see you, and you see them, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, which was very um, interesting uh, thing about the bar. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, here, maybe it's the ceiling, you know, a lot of installation, and then we hit <laughs> we hit some models in there because uh, yeah, some art. You know, uh, we made some jokes and hit some, um, put some models inside. Exactly. And now we have uh, two of three projects which we made. And uh, it uh, started actually with a very small bar, which I'll show you now. Um, it started a couple of years ago when we were still nobody, uh, but then we made this bar. And uh, it's Tati Bar. If you come to Stuttgart, then visit also this bar because you have three stops in Stuttgart: Imperia Concept Store, Jean Paul and Marco, and Tati Bar, and everything's very close to each other. Um, the Tati Bar was a uh, hmm, very uh, quick project because we had like four weeks for a project and for uh, building the bar, and we wanted just to have something very cheap and very. Um, universal to build with and with what is cheaper and more universal than um, Dachlatte, which I don't know how to say it in uh, English, but it's a very simple wooden step uh, like a slap or it's like uh, this just some wood, you know, and uh, it's 24 millimeters here 48 millimeters here and it's 3000 millimeters long, which is the most simple thing and very cheap so we built everything with it and uh, we have uh, small and big yeah exactly and we just uh, started to make some experiments and we said ah let's make a tribute to the to the car industry because actually nobody admits it but uh, everybody earns money here in stuttgart with the car industry even uh, musicians or even artists and everything which is very independent but somehow everybody has something to do with this car industry which we love and uh, then we want to also um, contribute something um, to the car industry and we have also this company Technobeton Motors which still have I think 10 um, designs of cars but this is for example one of them um, yeah to put to put a big car on the top of the bar so that everybody says ah yeah cool a car on the bar and then um, and then uh, the guys were here. The, it was Dieselgate, I think, or something like this. And it was uh, oil uh, crisis, or I don't know exactly. But we wanted to make some oil uh, spill on the bar. And um, yeah, the, then, uh, yeah, wow, car on the bar. And But the guys who wanted to build it, they were super afraid that this car might roll, back, uh, roll down here. And then crush some people, you know, down, like psh, disaster. So we made this very complex detail to to make a common geometry between the wheel and between the wooden construction so that you see maybe it's a mistake but it wasn't it was uh it was the idea that we just make a car which doesn't move because of geometrical qualities so uh this was the car it wasn't um uh, it hasn't been built it was uh expensive and we don't have time and um, it was not very aerodynamic and it was not very uh, animal friendly because this cat had to stay all the time there it was uh, designed to be stick here but <laughs> yeah then we said better not and uh, then you see here ah, it's a, it's a, again a picture of the bar very simple very beautiful and uh, we have uh, here the central table again and some some chairs and some uh, yeah some uh, variations of this uh, wooden stuff you know and here we want to say let's have fun let's uh, have a pool time in the summer and we designed also this pool and why we designed this pool because uh, this is the what we calculated it will remain when we build the whole place that this wood will remain and we wanted to hide it. So which is the best place to hide wood and to make a sculpture out of it is under the pool, which looks like a like a, a foundation construction of this um, object, which 
did distract uh, the att attention of uh, this uh, yeah um, rubbish and uh, yeah we don't work with people in renderings we work with dogs or cats and this was the trampoline trampoline to to uh, jump in the uh, in the in the pool and why we chose the round shape because uh, so people so people here love uh, squares they um, don't know maybe that next to the bar is this uh, column where you put some uh, posters so as every good architect we want to be friendly to our environment so we just uh, took the shape and put it in another proportion uh, as a pool uh, yeah and uh, here are the chairs which we we also designed for the bar tati quattro is the name of this chair you can buy it in tati and if we produce some and you see here the variations of the bar and the table and the shelves and it's a door so it was it would have been stupid just continue the shelf so that's why we made like this yeah like a some um curve in ableton or in after effects you know some, something like uh, animation of these uh, shelves uh to peroni they sell good beer peroni but somebody forgot to put it on the shelf i think and uh here we have um the cdjs or the turntables or turntables yeah and the mixer and this is a very important detail of the bar because when it was uh, corona time just we weren't allowed to meet and to drink some beer together with friends but we had this backstage of tati uh, where we had the <laughs> the trash bins and if somebody would come we just uh, pretend that we uh, put the put the trash away you know so uh, but actually this was um refrigerators hidden as a uh, uh, it was uh, there were masked as um trash bins with cold drinks the it here it's water and stuff you know here's wine and here's beer in this uh, in this fridge exactly so this is Tati upstairs um you see again we put some some impressions how it might look in real it looks like this you know you know, just come to Stuttgart and you'll see that it's like this and if you go down we uh, like uh, Falco a lot and we put um, always some some wallpapers for example now it was Falco but it has been also Sabrina uh, Salerno and there been also Donna Summer or another musicians uh, cool guys and um, we just change every now and then uh, the wallpaper down and uh, it distracts again you see um why they put this or uh if you go to the toilet you know and then you s listen to the sound of the toilet doesn't sound like a normal toilet it has a pipe system which goes down and if you're one of the friends of the uh, of tati you know then you see that here is also um some um yeah, some opening some door and if you go down to then you enter the real real place it's i don't remember where the ah uh, it's it's the end of the stair staircase you see these are the pipes from up and you see a red carpet which lets you enter the sex paradise with behind the uh the bit, not behind it's below that exactly um for, forgotten place where we uh, just uh, put some uh, furniture some exhibition some objects which our clients um, just uh, told us okay here we want to have uh, this volume there we, we have, uh, have to uh, make this and uh, we just designed it so uh it's first the grid with uh, some some toys then you have uh construction which used they they want to be uh dynamic so that you have this part moving um, like this you know so that you can lie here somebody can sit here or you know and then you can move under this uh, construction and uh, then you have this hole in the glass surface but uh, it doesn't work like a geometry because you have this construction here so this cannot move 
or we had to cut here, but it was super expensive. So we just make it static. And the uh, perspective of the imaginations fulfills the whole um, function of the object. Then we have here uh, another object, which is a little bit more dark and it has a copper um, yeah, frame, which uh, we took from Joseph Boyce. And uh, then we have here some royal noise uh, place to sit and we have a massage for your neck and back or other parts, you know, um, which is, yeah, very, uh, stays in uh, in your memories forever and um the central part ah this is the yeah the central part the, this these pipes they take uh, what comes here inside they take it down with this wonderful gold color golden color and it goes it's transparent it's not painted exactly it's transparent pipe and it goes to the it goes to the mattress which has a mirror here and mirror up and uh, some uh, some curtain and then uh, you can lie on the, the, this bed which is very warm sometimes and uh, if um, it happens it doesn't mean that it always happened but if it happens that it here is full then maybe or it it uh, comes some some liquid comes out then maybe because here there are a lot of people lying on it and it's very heavy and uh, then we have the um, Persian uh, round uh, round carpet with two uh, German shepherds, and in the middle of the of this, uh, it's a rotating platform actually. And in the middle, we have two cages. The one is for three people, and he is for one point five people, um, or one very big uh, person. And um, the, it, we want to just to uh, to construct the feeling of being. Uh, at the same moment apart from each other but also together in your destiny and uh, this is the round couch which uh, allows people to watch what happens and uh, it has special knobs here for stimulation which people enjoyed uh, for a certain reason but um, this is basically the the center of the composition so it's the beginner here the beginner area it's the uh, intermediate and it's the advanced area where we have uh, some <laughs> some arduino based parametrical uh, <laughs> composition dynamic uh, of uh, some uh, nails which come out and, um, and come back again so you can play with fire uh, in a certain way uh, on this furniture piece of furniture, which we uh, decided to um, to um, to dedicate to dedicate to Le Corbusier uh, because it reminds of his uh, lying chair. I don't remember the exact the word. The chaise long. The chaise long. Yeah, it's a sort of the uh, same thing. Yeah, ah, this is how they call it. Yeah. All right. So a couple of years later, it's. Uh, Unité d'habitation and with the uh, chaise long, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Here you have what you asked for. Uh, we we think always about uh, everybody. We had the, in the beginning of the lecture or of the of the talk, we had the um, chair with the with the breasts. Now you have, um, instead of it, uh, you have very different things like, uh, for example, the atomium, which is also a dynamic structure, um, which can uh, make the horizontal uh, movement of this uh, column. And another diagonal column uh, comes out of the um, of this, you know. Uh, here is the place to hold so that you don't uh, fall, uh, fly, uh, you know, uh, for, forward and um, yeah, we always work in the vertical, in the horizontal. But we said, okay, here we make an exception, make a diagonal element, uh, which was inspired by Claude Perron and Paul Virilio. Um, yeah, their inclined surface. And now it's uh, the most intellectual object which doesn't have function. 
but um, creative people find obviously some functions uh, in this object which we just designed to be beautiful and to be a mysterio mysterious uh, to have some mysterious pleasure on this object so some people like it and because uh, it's very um, very frequently used uh, we decided to put some uh, rubber uh, cylinders underneath the travertine uh, floor and uh, it doesn't make so much noise basically we have uh, reached the end of our um, presentation and uh, because it's always some dream of the architect that uh, we want to be something more than that we are now and this our um, always our inspiration maybe in a certain way to continue designing continue thinking and uh, in our case i'll show you our biggest inspiration maybe about um, our our uh, whole work is something which we don't want to um, achieve or something which is not in the future and in the sky which is very far away it's something which uh, somehow disappeared it has to be there but it's not now and it's the best prototype of a club which is a square it has a shitty floor it has white walls it's really not no architecture inside it's very um ah, there is no expression somehow which is, uh, also the expression itself somehow uh it's very functional because we have here the um the dj booth we have here a place for empty bottles and full bottles scoop mate and beer a lot of cigarettes and some other beer and a sexy poster and uh, gray flights and um, yeah, that said everything which you need and a lot of uh, sound possibilities of course uh, a subwoofer which is important some guy who disrespect the rules and uh, paint some stupid stuff you know and um, of course this uh, very important detail which is the door holder because if drunken people came inside and opened the door it it hits the um it hits the wooden construction which hits the turntable which hits the needle which uh, makes like and uh, it also hits the the cdj which hits the mixer which hits this cdj and on it is a beer which then pours on the uh, mixer so this is key detail for every club you need this and also some people which are, who are very drunk just just uh, fall down on the ground if they don't see it and uh, run into it and it's uh, fun somehow uh, here are different cigarettes because it was a good party it's uh, the rendering was made five in the morning it was a good party yeah, what, but it was too much render time to uh, render all the cigarettes so it's much more in the reality it's a little bit abstract here's the bar and here behind this box it's a uh, some hole where you if you know it you can put always your jacket here in the winter and it's a secret girl uh, wardrobe um and uh, a ventilator because it's very warm and also or it's your biggest fan <laughs> 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 and also this very uh cool detail there is one hole in this construction there's uh, it's a round hole but uh, now julian made a square one because maybe he wants to make it more architectural and um inside we were joking that um maybe there is the spirit of dresden maybe somebody uh, died there already because he just didn't want to go out of this club because it was so good in this club i want to just live here and die here stay here forever but of course the spirit of the party never dies and the spirit gives power to this hand and if some um, uh, sexy people would sit on this uh, on this uh, you know it's like a sitting tribune somehow you can sit on it or you can put your drink if you decide to sit on it then this power magic of the spirit comes and then the hand comes and it uh, touches your ass so with this <laughs> With this last detail, I say thank you for the invitation and come to Stuttgart or come to the world of Technobeton and uh, enjoy your time with us. <laughs> no, it was really cool. Um, I think it's, um, it's really interesting uh, 
how you guys uh, present your projects. I mean, we can keep it a little bit to see the techno baton world. What I really, really love about um, this way of putting together the projects is that there is this mystery of going to this mystery that creates the curiosity to come to Stuttgart and actually see what is physically there and what is in the head of Techno Beton. Um, and uh, it's, uh, I think that's the most um, curious thing. But um, I wanted to ask you some, some stuff about, I mean, your background and about, because it's very nice, but we also want to know, we want to be 100% techno, but also 100% concrete. So a little bit more about how you turn these ideas into reality. Um, and I'm curious, I always start with the beginning of each person that comes to the podcast. Uh, what was what was for you the reason to to become an architect? And I mean, you're a musician and architect, so multi-level creative. And how did you end up from, from Sofia to, to Stuttgart and from and met uh, Julian and so on. So what is a little bit the, the backstory of this uh, crazy background? Um, it's a, yeah, a question which I also keep on asking myself. Um, there is not a simple answer to it. Uh, one hint, maybe it's um, the, 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 somehow the um, feeling of being bored. Um, it's not the most interesting city or it's not the most interesting uh, university somehow. So you get bored very quickly. And if you don't uh, use this boredom as inspiration for some um, ideas, then maybe you just end up like a bored uh, normal architect who just paints some corners. And um, about Bulgaria, I also started to get bored very early in uh, my 18th year, where I had to apply for architecture. I somehow uh, didn't know what to do when I was um, young. And then my father had a, a building company, um, which uh, sound, sounded okay, let's do something with the architecture maybe. But uh, there was another inspiration. So uh, I just went to these um, exams and you had to prepare always like you had to learn how to draw. You had to learn how to think. I said, no, no, no way. I cannot learn how to be creative. I mean, uh, it's somehow you don't have to learn. it. You have to uh, always not exactly understand how to be creative because if you don't have this moment of mystery or this moment of insecurity then you are fucked up and you're, you're just uh i don't know it's not the real uh real uh, stuff for me and um yeah so i, I got bored from from uh, all the time from people who want to teach you how to do things now you have to teach people how to don't do things maybe it's much more constructive than uh, to teach people now you press this and now you draw like this and then uh, no man you just uh, just put things as they are not uh, me meant to be together of course you have always the danger that you fail which is also a very good thing so learn to fail learn to uh, put things uh, in a impossible way and then uh, uh, maybe one of the hundred you come with a really cool idea you come with a really cool project really cool uh, then um, result and uh, if you fail enough then on the uh, hundreds time or on the thousand uh, time if you fail thousand thousand time then it doesn't doesn't matter for you and just you just uh, somehow incorporate you know in your thinking in your process and then uh, it's nothing which you have to be afraid of you have to I think you have to train it. You have to look for the failure and to, for the for the mistake, for the error, and um, yeah, that's it. And uh, the other thing of the the other part of the question: now, uh, if you come to Stuttgart and uh, you see not everything which I showed you now, of course, uh, if you work in the software, which is um, somehow our uh, universe, you know where we create things very often in the software. 
um, then of course nothing, not everything can come out of this software. But things which come out of the software and became real, they have poetry somehow. They have uh, poetic poetics, which is referred to the things which are in the software and didn't came out. So they have much more dimensions, of course. If you see now a picture, you have like uh, one picture. But if you see a whole uh, surrounding, a whole um, environment, then it has a lot of different uh, possibilities to tell the stories, which maybe we have told in this software bubble, but didn't came out. But somehow some echo of these things tells you this uh, whole crazy stuff which happens in the head and in the software. No, that's uh, that's for sure one thing that it's sort of like telling the full story and then you don't have to like, it's more like uh, joining reality and imagination and, and, and put it together and, and, uh, and as I said, create this mystery. So that's why f when, uh, when I saw for the first time like the short version of this presentation, I was thinking, ah, I want to ask them uh, what is what is real and what is not real. But I think the beauty of of the presentation is to not know what is real and what is un unreal. Just uh, if anyone has the opportunity to go to Stuttgart and discover it themselves. Um, and um, talking about software, what what are your? I mean, you just said that there is no like somebody that can teach you if there is something that you imagine you'll find a way to create it but people are always curious what do you um what do you work with to create those beautiful images that are uh, also have a poetic they're like not they're realistic but also not realistic they're like this there is always this uh dichotomy of contrasting things as i don't know the volcano table that it's heavy but light in the same time and uh, it's floating marble all the time. Um, so, what is your what is your tool set to create these beautiful diagrams? Um, we use uh, Cinema 4D with different render plugins, and we use Photoshop for uh, some post production. And it changed over the time. Basically, uh, first started with Photoshop, and we misused the Photoshop. I made all my all my. Uh, uh, studies with Photoshop. I didn't, uh, I couldn't draw basically. I couldn't uh, use AutoCAD or I couldn't use uh, 3D and anything. I faked everything with Photoshop, which was not <laughs> basically what you were expected to uh, as an architectural student. And I remember this day when I had my 1.0 uh, in the final presentation and um, I was invited to teach at the university and I had a very uh, big uh, fellowship and uh, whatever, you know, and uh, then I came to Bulgaria a year after and uh, my <laughs> sort of fame because I was like 26 or 7 and uh, it doesn't happen very often that then you're invited somewhere and make lectures and uh, uh, and people in Bulgaria were like, I, I want, I had to work, you know, I started working in an architectural office. I was like, oh, this guy must be some kind of wunderkind, you know, he teaches here. And then <laughs> I, first day I was sitting, yeah, now uh, open AutoCAD. <laughs> I say, no way, I don't know how to draw. And then everybody was like, <laughs> so I was like really uh, fucked up there and I uh, couldn't use uh, anything of my uh, tools which I uh, used to uh, work with for my previous uh, projects and I had to um, start from scratch then uh, so it happened uh, some somehow smoothly uh, in one or two months then I was fitting other softwares and which I what I what I like about softwares is uh, that um, they have uh, shortcuts and uh, if you are so fast with the shortcuts and if you reach this um, state of working uh, with the software without thinking and without uh, looking for anything you just uh, are in trance you know it's like uh, playing an instrument we don't look and you just know that the melody is going and this is all sort of the flow which i um, connect also with the name techno beton because uh, techno is always this flow and beton is at the end you have the result you know so um yeah the software is important uh, 
uh, actually the software is not important. You can make it also with Word, maybe some cool graphics or with Excel. Uh, it doesn't ma matter. But if you reach this state, state of, uh, of communication between the software and your yourself and your exter externalized uh, yourself, which is dreaming about something, you know, you have this uh, um, process and it cannot stop. You just, uh, yeah, you've made it for me. And it happens with shortcuts uh, and everybody can find his <laughs> shortcut chain, which uh, makes him uh, more fun. But one thing that uh, also it's, of course, one thing that you see from like from very brief uh, presentations of your project like the first time i didn't even see you live and and you get this okay these guys do architecture like you said in this flow state it's really like music it's really like some ideas that are crashing and then uh comes out these results i mean uh everything seems so flawless but in your projects you can see that even if you have a small project on in a scale small that it's a maybe a few square meters club and shop not to say that it's but you go in di such a deepness that this small space it's like a small universe you have all these um details and all these ideas and all this it's a story that it's made through space uh and it's a beautiful way of working and because you said that you wanted always to you know not be taught how to be creative and just to to learn your way i mean maybe fail learn through failing was there maybe a first period of your career where you first hopped on on a regular architectural job and then you said mm, no this is not gonna be my thing for for like how did you reach this stage now where you do architecture in this way or do you still have like some reality check moments where you need to still open some sort of autocad and draw as you said the first the the, the standard details that your professor teaches you <laughs> the first semester uh, <laughs> yeah we we uh, totally enjoy making fun of some um, some obvious things which we uh, heard from our professors all the time you know and uh, for example if you don't have an idea just take the elevation as a ground floor Ooh. <laughs> which you <is> sometimes make <laughs> because if you have a project you show it to your professor and he doesn't know what to say uh, then he maybe come up with some stupid idea which uh, is really stupid but if you make it then uh, then maybe it's cool and uh, for example we also are for example, me, I um, when I was still um, uh, still in the first or second or third semester, of course, and I uh, just said, okay, then forget everybody, everything what you think, and just pretend to be somebody else and play a role. And then it was cool because um, then you pretend to be I don't know some famous architect, or you pretend to be the the most uh, lowest part of the hierarchy in some office and just draw parallel lines. Chick, 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 chick. And uh, these things, you know, and um, if you're a DJ, of course, you also have to play a role and uh, it makes fun to trick out yourself somehow. And uh, otherwise, maybe you cannot um, survive. But was there a, a moment in your life where you needed to be like the nine to five architect? Or you went straight up, okay, I have to be like, I don't know, the techno beton guy. There are no nine to five parts. They always work. They come early, eight to eight to eight architects. If you say the normal architect, they always work. This is what I also hated. How come that everybody has to work so much? I mean, for example, this uh, design for the bar, we made it in two or three hours. Uh, this this rendering here, the the one uh, the left with the with the pyramid. And you just really, as I told you, it's a, it's a um, really this techno beton techno is fast music, you know. And um, then you have to. W when we had this uh, talk, we just went to Julian's place and said, ah, "Julian, you know, in the middle has to be a table." And uh -huh. somehow I told him what I was thinking, and I was all right. I already have the parameter parameters 
and then you say, shall I make it really like a nine to five architects? Uh, let's make a design thinking and let's make this all stupid stuff. Not just do it. Psh, and then uh, this is Technobaton, just, just do it. Psh. And um, we did it. It was two or three hours, something like this. And we went to drink beer. <laughs> and um... let me show you, for example, what we were. Uh, now I remember. I'll sh uh, share. Do you see my yeah. screen still? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, first the uh, first idea of the table. Let's make a landscape. <laughs> There's a button in cinema which makes a landscape. Uh, ready. And then um, then uh, we said, ah, maybe this landscape is something uh, which is more like an abstract landscape or a very uh, landscape which is not uh, very um, functional. And we had this uh, first, these two stupid ideas. We said, oh, no. And then uh, we still had this. But I said, hey, Julian, do you really think, shall we really work this much and make it so parametrical? Uh, yeah, okay. And if you really turn the parameters down of this landscape, and if you end up with uh, four uh, corners here, like you have a lot of more corners here and a lot of more corners here, if you end up uh, with four corners here, one corner here, you have still the landscape. It's a pyramid, and uh, we were ready with this design, with this table. So uh, it took like uh, 10 minutes, this table. And uh, we just wanted, <laughs> <laughs> actually, we made only this. And for a publication, we made also this fake variant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that it didn't seem like you worked just two hours. You were like, oh, let's see better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and the, if you, uh, if I have to summarize, um, first idea, best idea. Just do it. This is uh, like Technobeton, sounds very Technobeton. Then um, Ein Geiles Bild is Ein Geiles Bild, which translated in uh, English. Geil, it's this German word which cannot be really translated in uh, English somehow. It's uh, both uh, like uh, wow, uh, wonderful, crazy good, you know, but in the same way, it's something perverse, perverse guy, guy, and uh, <laughs> it means it means both. Let's put it that way. It means cool and horny. <laughs> yeah, but it's also sort of a trash, you know. Yeah, it's guy, it's, you cannot say guy in the university somehow uh, in front of uh, some academics, you know. They, uh, it's not this way. We cannot say guile to the client somehow, and but we say it, of course. And uh, I had a student. Uh, she made a work about the word guile. Uh, she made a project about this, which I really uh, enjoyed this project and especially the beginning. So uh, then we had this um, this uh, somehow uh, philosophy: Ein geiles Bild ist ein geiles Bild. And if then uh, we see the picture. And guy picture is a guy. A guy picture is a guy picture. I wanted also to translate it in uh, Latin, which uh, we did, but I forgot how it sounds. <laughs> and, uh, like you know, we make a like a heraldic uh, sign and with some and then say some Latin and guy is it for techno but we, we didn't do it. It uh, is maybe the next project which I call Julian uh, later, and. Um, yeah, this is, this is, these are these three uh, principles of technical. If you, if you uh, at a certain point say, maybe there are also some like 100% techno, 100% beton, you have to be 100%. And um, yeah, if you work uh, in office, of course, you can make your work uh, very professional and you can have fun and everything. But I, for myself, discovered that uh, it, it's cool. I enjoyed it, but it did, didn't fulfill me uh, like I imagined, uh, like I imagined, you know. So uh, at a certain point uh, in my work, I said, OK, is the sign Gile's built? Is it a Gile built uh, picture? And if it was not, then it was not Technobaton. And uh, if I had started to feel like Technobaton, I started to believe, uh, of course, in it. And um, you cannot do it from today uh, till tomorrow for overnight. Uh, doesn't work but it's a process and uh, at a certain point you pff, 
just feel comfortable with these uh, rules and uh, it's not rude they are not rules they're like philosophy you know and uh, then you just um, say all right uh, i'm techno <laughs> no it totally like uh, it, that's why i wanted like to showcase your like um all the all the guests of the of the Creative Insider podcast are hundred percent chosen because I don't know I found them interesting or I I think it's very interesting to see that there are many ways to do design or creativity or music or uh, photography renderings everything and um, yeah your approach together with Julian was uh, very very like. Uh, eye-catching especially for the different architects and and you mentioned a couple of times that you um, have been involved on also into a, academics and teaching people uh, how is your work um, accepted and how is your perform how are your performances seen uh, in in that world because you are like basically on one of the extremes i would say of approach of architecture if you as you said you're 100 percent. there is no like uh, 30 30 percent you you're 100 percent uh, techno 100 percent beton 100 percent your approach 100 percent uh i think authentic um and um yeah um, what was like that's also some sometimes it's a very conservative world especially in the field of architecture so how is how did you start teaching how did it happen that you got a, a gig as you started the, the conversation with me you said you cannot teach how to be creative or you should teach how to be creative so yeah what uh, how did you approach with that world yeah uh, first time when i was uh, feeling that i teach it was teaching myself and um, it was in the evening before my presentation of my final project, like a diploma project. And I was super nervous. So uh, when I uh, invited my mother and my father, uh, they came to Stuttgart from Bulgaria and they were overexcited, of course, which made me also so super nervous. And then I um, said, OK, uh, just have dinner. And I go to open the computer and uh, revise no, one more time my my uh, my project so that I know what to tell tomorrow, you know, before the uh, in front of the people. And then um, in this uh, in this room at the university where was my computer, then I open the door and then another guy sits there, you know, a friend of mine, and uh, he was just working on his computer something. I said. Oh no, I just wanted to be alone, you know. But you know, I have polite <laughs> hello. And then, um, then I said, okay, you have to go forward somehow. And I asked this guy, do you want to just that I tell you what I do? And uh, he told me, yes, okay, tell me. Uh, and then um, I started presenting my project. And I was all the time like um asking myself uh is it okay or is it not and he was like a mirror in front of myself and i i was like two persons at the same time the one who like is the presenter and the other who is the critic so uh i was a uh, critic critic uh, uh, taking critic on my my words and uh because i told this guy what i do and it was again thinking about all the things and this other voice uh, told me ah maybe you should do it like this uh, i said wow <laughs> i want to be this other voice you know uh, the 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 voice who um, not teaches you how to do things but asks you some stuff and uh, maybe um, just uh, open some uh, some horizons to think also in other directions but not like uh, no make this make this make this it's not uh, it's not right uh, it doesn't make uh, people don't make it like this no to be like uh, this uh, very teacher uh, but to be the critic or to be the guy who asks uh, the questions and uh, the guy who also motivates people and uh, say hey, difficult idea but go for it don't sleep and just do it otherwise uh, you just make like uh, some exercise which doesn't have a big meaning 
and uh, ironi ironically enough, after this uh, presentation of my diploma, then the uh, professor came to me and uh, said, what do you do next month? Do you have a job? And I said, <laughs> I said no. <laughs> like, Who has a job? I mean, uh, you don't have time. You just uh, make your diploma, you know. And, um, and then he told me, yeah, uh, then start teaching at the university, start teaching at the, the IDMA by this time, you know, and uh, I said, all right, deal. It was, you know, after the presentation in the elevator, like six, uh, six floors. And uh, this was my, uh, my application, basically, and uh, my interview. I said, okay, <laughs> on the first floor, yeah, handshake and... <laughs> <laughs> what, was what, was, what was your diploma what was your like uh what was your like um graduation project was it something already out of the box like now yeah, yeah. or actually uh all the time i um get worse you know my diploma <laughs> was basically my best project and after that no no maybe uh my my second best project the project before the diploma was even better and uh Every minute I get worse, so now you don't see my best. <laughs> but uh, now you know I'm not Yasin Markov anymore. I'm Technobotan, which is uh, another thing. So uh, Technobotan is uh, the escape. I know the the <laughs> like the um, yeah the the alter ego is like uh, you're like Clark Kent and Superman. You're like Yasin Markov during yes, Markov was maybe the morning, <laughs> and then you turn into Technobotan. <laughs> There was a there was a book about the uh, relationship between uh, fear and architecture, and um, it uh, appeared I think 2006. So there there is a part of my diploma inside, and um, it's the book is called Five Codes, and there are two projects of mine, which the one is really cool, the other worked very good as a performance or as a lecture. But in the book, I didn't manage to uh, put it in the right shape. I didn't manage to translate it between the two, two mediums, you know. So uh, maybe I should open the old file and then make another presentation out of it. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, like, also, mm, you have, like, uh, super cool ideas, but uh, we know that uh, turning super cool ideas into reality because of the, let's call it this way, building, especially now it's a uh, expensive pleasure. Um, was it like Imperia, Imperia Store 1 and Imperia Store 2 uh, was in our conversations outside of the podcast and I figured out that uh, you are actually also like the manager, the owner of the store. Was it this your personal project to to build one of your ideas and showcase it to eventual clients, or was it just because you wanted to build it and it was cool? Was that the way to to because for every architect that starts his own practice or wants to build, uh, he has to has built uh, something, right? So that the client is kind of calm and says, "Oh, he did this." He manage. He probably will manage to do my building too. Uh, so was that the case for you? That this was yeah, like your one-to-one -one model of a project. Yes, everything uh, or not everything, but a lot of things start as a joke, and then the joke gets serious. So it was the case here also with Imperia. We just walked by a wonderful place, and uh, it was empty. So we said. Why don't we ask if we can rent this place? Uh, and it's large in the middle of the city, you know, old building. And of course, we don't have so much cash to rent it. But we just said, OK, let's ask. And then we went to the guys and they said, ah, yeah, we don't seem to find somebody soon. So just make something before it uh, ends like the ghost place, which doesn't, uh, which nobody wants to rent, you know. So we said, OK, yeah, we just want to make a weekend uh, party and then they said, ah no 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 we can't uh, no 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 too too short uh, make something for two months uh, you don't have to pay anything <laughs> <laughs> and then you see all right this wonderful big place seven meters 50 floor uh, height you know wonderful perfect 
and uh, then just you say all right now you have one week <laughs> until you have to open it and then uh, me my sister and Kathy actually the girls girls started the idea and I came later uh, in the process of thinking about this it was at a party in Bulgaria and uh, there is this secret club called Dolu and uh, we were downstairs and my sister shows me yeah you know this the email uh, they said yes and we have to open in one week so we were like drinking gin tonic and I said, ah, we, we can make this. And she said, ah, yeah, then I will make uh, flowers, and we make uh, clothes, and make, uh, uh. and then the guy, the, uh, what do you do? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I make cappies. Okay, you want to sell your cappies? So we called some people late in the night and uh, they said, yeah, okay, we are in. And uh, after one half an hour, uh, we had the concept. And um, then, uh, then uh, we said, uh, it's uh, so difficult now to find the name. And I said to Ivana, hey, come on, uh, it was half an hour and we built up this um, imperia of ideas, you know, imperial Bulgarian uh, empire, you know, and uh, she said, bingo, imperia. <laughs> <laughs> so the name was given and uh, then some things must better stay as ideas. You don't have to make them, you know. If you have good ideas, it's super cool. And then leave the ideas, just leave. Maybe uh, they have to be born and they have to die as ideas. And don't don't be very like uh, I said. I say this to myself, you know, because uh, you also want to have. Uh, I mean, I, I don't tell me you have. You want to have like thousand years and make all ideas, real projects. But why? I mean, some ideas just have to be ideas, and they're cool enough especially if they're born after second beer or third beer and uh, they're cool for a moment on the next day say oh, no way and um, for example the classical example for idea which should stay and remain forever an idea um, and then uh, the, the the project imperia it's a difficult situation because you, you are at the same time you're client you're uh, the architect you're the manager you know so yeah, it's uh, it's like uh, being three people at the same time, and um, which makes fun. It's um, good things. Uh, it's a good thing that you don't have a client. You just uh, do things, and you look at them. If you see these small models, and then you see built this big object, the Beast of California, and say, okay, you know, you build the small things. Now you build bigger things. Maybe tomorrow you build. Uh, airport or stadium or uh, i don't know and um but it's uh, as you said uh, every project is a universe and even if you make a small object then you have to love it exactly the same amount as if you build a big house so, uh, yeah it's not about the uh, dimensions and it's not about the uh, ego you know the architect i want to build you know Fuck it. i mean it just yeah uh, um make the projects like 100 percent it doesn't matter if it's a box or if it's a big house or outbound to be always 100 percent. so this is like the the philosophy for the huh yeah, like Bruce Lee would say, uh, be water, I would say, be 100%. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally, totally. Uh, and did you, like, in order to make this, I mean, part of the ideas happen and turn it into into reality, um, so you put your own, like, investments there to to make it happen because it was cool. And then, it, I mean, you also have the the techno side because you guys actually do also techno music and you perform uh, the events um, which for me when i was listening the story for the first time uh, it was like a hurricane of of thought like first because the first uh, techno tom presentation i saw was like 100 percent compressed <laughs> it was like a techno baton, very distilled 
very pushed uh, and uh, you have to think very quickly about what is happening. And I was thinking, okay, these guys did uh, three clubs, more or less. Uh, I mean, the other one is a store, but is it really a store? It can be an imperial of ideas. And um, to have the gig of playing music uh, puts you in the right uh, position because you connect with the right people that will need the right project that you will have the right ideas for. Uh, so did this also play a big role for your uh, networking? Let's say it was a different way of to networking because uh, if you do good music, uh, 100% uh, if, if I want to translate your other motto, uh, and geiles, uh, geiles Lied is ein geiles Lied. So <laughs> a cool song, it's a cool song. Uh, they yes. then trusted, <laughs> they tr trusted you to make a cool project. Uh, so is this also something that helped you build the trust with your friends, clients that made you build the Tati Bar, the Gianpaolo and Marco, if I'm not wrong? Uh, in the opposite, uh, if you're a good DJ, then people know you as a good DJ, and then they think, you know, all oh, this guy, he doesn't sleep, uh, he'll come late to the meeting, and uh, I saw him yesterday, he was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, no. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, counterproductive. Uh, we chose the more uh, difficult way to be... Um, bad guys and to make uh, bad architecture, which uh, is somehow successful in the end. Um, yeah, and um, it's somehow also more this, um, this mystery of the night, you know, when some, some ideas come out like they're like, uh, they don't want to show themselves in the sunlight. And uh, then you have these ideas and you have to be very quiet and very uh, careful with them to catch them or to uh, to have them around you, you know. And uh, this is what I like about the night and about the when you play, for example, uh, until five o'clock in the morning, then you have a different state of energy you know and then you go home and then everything is silent and you sometimes take taxi because you're like Shik, finito but sometimes you know you just walk and then you have an idea about the song and uh, it makes pictures in your head and then uh, you go to sleep and said oh, okay so you sleep with this idea somehow and uh, on the next day you say ah yeah it was uh, it was really good uh, i have to make it a project from the idea and uh, this is what uh, a lot of um, people who don't play uh, music maybe don't have. And uh, I, uh, of course, uh, have the negative effect of uh, being a DJ that people think you're a party animal and you cannot work, you know, and you take things not so serious. Ah, it's also a good, a good um, sentence, time for not so serious. We just uh, don't want to make architecture so serious. We know we want also to have fun, and that's why we have this uh, brother account of Technobeton, Technobeton Fun, and uh, yeah. So I just uh, decided, or we decided to take this disadvantage of uh, some people who think in cliches that the architects have to wear like this uh, black, and then uh, they have to be every day in the office and work late but work no not uh, drink and uh, yeah if we uh, take this uh, negative uh, things in, uh, uh, yeah um, yeah uh, then then you give more power for the other things and uh, it's how it works somehow I hope it was understandable what I wanted to say <laughs> more or less <laughs> but it's I think that's the beauty of it that it's like uh, everything it's mystery it's a little bit of i mean people have to read between the lines this is uh something that it happens with uh your presentation with like it's the as i said the fun part is that you present your full idea in a seamless way in a very like serious and seamless way so when i see your projects 
it, there is this curiosity of thinking, were they really so crazy to make this? Uh, they might. The, the beauty is that I think they, you might have been built the last crazy room, as you might not have. So the only way to discover it is to go to go to the bar and, and figure it out. Uh, not everything is built. As it was uh, just to say um, a little bit idealized. But if uh, there is somebody uh, from our listeners uh, who wants to have similar project, then we, of course, can be very helpful. We would be glad to be involved in this project <laughs> in every way. <laughs> uh, that, that is good. That is good. But uh, OK, let me be the Mike the Moda um, person to, you know, step on the ground. Um, how do you su sustain like your <laughs> everyday life? Because I mean, um, of course you don't do like, um, what is it? Mainstream architecture. You don't do also, you don't do also streamlined, archi uh, streamlined architecture in the sense you don't do it, uh, the regular way where you have an office, very professional, very like, uh, I mean, you can do it also despite your, uh, despite your DJ career, but um, it's not the way it's, it's done from what I understand. So do you still have like a teaching gig? Do you make some money of the Imperial store? Do you make some money of the DJ sets? Like, because, you know, people, let's say if, if you're an architect listening and then you're like on a, a eight to eight job where you have to draw details of the water insulation beneath the <laughs> concrete uh, slab and things like that. And you see your fiery presentation and you say, yes, I want to do like this, but I want to pay the rent. And uh, I don't know, this seems impossible to do. So what is your daily where are the yeah where are the streams that sustain your life that everybody has to sustain like the rent the bills and so on i mean uh, i i don't think that everybody can have the same model and uh, some people just uh, are um very fast in their hobbies or they're very organized uh, not as me for example and they have the nine to five job and then after this uh, they paint like for two or three hours or uh, make some music uh, piece and it's pff, wow and because they are like doing this for years and years and then they get better and they don't have this problem okay i have to combine balls you know and uh Sometimes it's also uh, uh, maybe b better to uh, not earn money with your fun projects. Um, I experienced it several ways when you have fun projects and then you say, ah, okay, now I know it's really cool, but I'll try to sell it for a lot of money. And then, then you have these clients or you have this bigger pool of people who everybody has an idea and, uh, and in the end you have not 100%, you have also, if you have 80%, some optimists say, you know, you have to be happy that it's not 60, but uh, then it's not 100. And um, I somehow think in this, um, in this direction that what's the biggest capital uh, for, for me? Uh, do I need the whole money? Um, of course, everybody needs the money. But uh, for me, it's uh, much more important to have the focus and to have the time to focus on things. So I just uh, prefer that I work in this direction and uh, then um, somehow um, to have to have this capacity of making these ideas, you know. I cannot make them maybe so good if I would work from nine to five, so I don't do it. And of course, I, I had these uh, jobs at the university, which was also very time absorbing. So I didn't uh, make it so long. I quit at the University of Stuttgart uh, two years ago. And of course, we have the Imperia store. I told it in the beginning that it's like the, the thing which uh, makes the uh, some some revenue, but you have also to invest in this store. So 
it's always sounded like a, you know, like a magician. Okay, well, so you have to be like uh, catching the right ball, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. And uh, in my case, uh, first, uh, first, it's uh, fun to to make it, you know, to be like, uh, okay, now I don't have. Uh, here this uh, project but i can play and uh, now imperia is uh, better so i can say okay let's uh, spend a little bit more time on other things and uh, this is all the time uh, it's a fight you know it's not uh, very easy it um, it's uh, in the end a fight with uh, all you know circumstances but it makes fun and it keeps you alive i cannot uh, imagine that i uh, would have my secure life and uh, then uh, I know that in 10 years I don't draw the the window uh, with two chambers but I or three chambers I draw it with four chambers so, oh. and um, this is not what I uh, would uh, do I think that I'll be much quicker tired if uh, if I would do this and uh, yeah so um, so yeah, it's uh, it's always an uh, adventure to to um, live the life of techno baton. No, it's so it's like uh, okay, I got your philosophy. So better to have uh, what, yeah, as you said, to focus what you prioritize. So say okay, I want to have hundred percent fun. That means I won't have hundred uh, percent income, but. I will have hundred percent fun, and uh, it will be adventurous, but it will be <laughs> it will be fun, as you said. Um, no, that's um, I, I love the philosophy. I think everything what uh, I like is that everything uh, it's in one line. You cannot. Uh, this is how you discover if somebody it's faking it or making it. If it's hundred percent aligned, then. Um, then it's uh, it's uh, the reality of 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 the person. Um, so Yasin, um, I really love your presentation. I really love your project. I want to say one more time that Julian, it's always welcome back to give the other perspective or to join together or to show us other three hours uh, conceptual uh, design work. Um, we always conclude uh, the the conversation with um, I call it the think tank for inspiration. So I ask people if they can uh, suggest out of the of the, out of their head. Um, it has to be also again something that you like. Um, everybody of us have these moments where they're a little down uh, or maybe need a little bit of inspiration, and they love to do something or they love to read a book, to watch a movie, to listen to music. Uh, to go somewhere to do some sport. So if you could share what is what are your favorite activities, books, podcasts, whatever you whatever comes up on top of the your head that you do when you want to, uh, I don't know, feel in in your flow state. Yeah, to be honest, uh, this is the most difficult question till now. <laughs> and now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if Julian would have been here, he would uh, definitely have a really good answer. I, um, I'm maybe too busy to um, to be in town, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have time to be like uh, low on morale. All right, uh, I have it. Uh, good bass line and uh, good bass drum. I think it's a good arpeggiator, uh, especially it's it always up. Uh, all right, uh, better better formula. Good kick drum. Good arpeggiator and a good snare. Finished. <laughs> then you're really, then it's 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 a magic. Really try it if you if somebody of our listeners is down, then uh, it's very quickly. If you open this Ableton Live software, it uh, has a free trial for one month. Then it means that you are one month really psh, super cool. Then you press the bass drum. You press the snare on every second. You know. And then you make an arpeggiator, which is the eighth arpeggiator or a sixteenth arpeggiator, it doesn't matter. That's it. Then you're happy. Man. Oh, yeah. oh that's it was there wasn't a better way to conclude the conversation. So 
Thank you, Yasen. Thank you to everybody who were listening or who will listen this later or just on Spotify. And um, I'll put all the links. I mean, you'll find all the links in the description of checking the work of Technobeton of Yasen. And uh, yeah, if you want to get some crazy ideas, don't hesitate to text them and uh, you'll get a response. Thank you, uh, thank you, Georgi, for inviting us, and uh, it was really fun. Uh, it was um, really um, important to uh, make the extended version director's cut of the presentation because in Frankfurt we just uh, had like uh, 20 minutes. And thanks for this opportunity. Uh, it happened just in time before we forget what we was think we were thinking about this project and uh, start new ones. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that uh, next time Julian will be with us uh, and uh, then uh, he'll be even more than uh, more hundred uh, percent Technobeton than just my hundred percent. All right. Uh, so uh, to, to get the 200 percent experience. Well, 200. then uh, thank you, everybody, and have a good evening. Thank you. Bye bye. We love you. We love you.